Did you know there was a time when you didn't have to worry about your router collecting various types of data from your network and then sending it back home or, in a worst case scenario, sharing it with its partners? I think it was about 2017 when this practice became known to the public because manufacturers had to disclose that some type of your data will be stored on their servers. And while that didn't sit well with a lot of people, it eventually became a new normal. People got accustomed to not having complete privacy and the act of clicking on agree became a reflex. There are obviously some secure alternatives such as OpenWRT and DDWRT, but there is the question of harder compatibility and the potentially high learning curve. I know that to some of you it's easy to flash a new firmware, but the popularity of the Google Wi-Fi shows that simple and easy is always the winner. So, since I know a lot of people use TP-Link routers, I thought it's wise to have a look at which type of data is being collected, which is shared and sold, and if there is a way to opt out of the data collection. Let's first start by having a look at what is disclosed in the privacy policy. It's a lengthy read, but it does seem that TP-Link gets fairly straight to the point. Some of the collected data is going to be provided by you, the user, when creating the account, and that includes the email, the location, the avatar, the nickname, the country code, the phone identifier, and more. When you enable the device binding, TP-Link gets some user personalized settings, which include the family management, and apparently more. If you subscribe to the Home Shield, there's even more data collection and processing, but we will get to it a bit later. If you enable Alexa, the Google Assistant or any other supported third-party service, TP-Link may transmit personal data into your account with them. Very strange wording, but I assume it means that TP-Link may have access to that data besides the big tech giants such as Amazon and Google. Moving forward, we can see the personal data that TP-Link automatically collects. We immediately see that running a speed test will store the results and the IP address, and that the Home Shield will collect a lot of data. Honestly, it kind of makes sense because their system does include some prevention and detection protocols. It seems we're dealing with anonymized ID data, some network traffic data, which can include the DNS, the HTTP header, DHCP and more. I assume that the DNS and the HTTP header data are encrypted, although it's not stated. Also, they could be used to create a pattern and probably a sort of profile of the user. Moving forward, we can see that the Home Care SDK is still covered even though the newer TP-Link routers have removed it. We can see that there's quite a bit of data that's collected here, and I may start to understand why they went with a third-party entity afterwards. And now we get to the interesting part, which says that for marketing push, there is some data collected about the app and the device it's installed on. I assume it means the Feather app, and that it's possible to withdraw the consent. That can be done by you emailing them at privacy at tplink.com. And you can also ask for data deletion at accountdelete.tplinkcloud.com. I would have preferred an opt out button in the app or the web browser while keeping the functionality of the router, but there are some extra steps. Let's scroll back up and see how tplink uses the personal data. You can see it here, pretty much the standard nowadays, which means very little is left out. It seems that it's only the automated decision making. Not sure what that means. Now let's see what is going on with the sharing of the personal data. So it's their partners and other companies that they work with. And yes, these third parties are to be held liable for keeping the confidentiality obligations. We can also see a list of some of their partners, which are the usual suspects. You can read the entire privacy policy by yourself, but I'm going to stop here since this video will get needlessly bloated. Still, this is not all I did, because I set up OpenDNS logging and let it cook for about 24 hours until I checked the logs. I did not enable the home shield and the home care package is not a part of the router, which is actually the TP-Link AX73, and I also did not enable the remote management. Let's have a look. Hmm, why do I get so many instances of the safe things area.com? I mean, why do I get them at all? I have no third-party service or function enabled. So I checked the web and I found a community post dated back to 2022 where TP-Link states that they optimized it so it doesn't send as many requests. I mean, I didn't get thousands of requests, that's for sure, but I shouldn't get any of them. From what I could gather, the Home Shield uses the Avira services even when only the quality of service and the parental controls are enabled. 
I don't mean to make unfounded suppositions, but what exactly is the TP-Link OS that they're running on their router, when most of the functions are from third parties? Seems very bare bones to me. At least they could have unlocked the hardware to be used with third party software, but only certain chipsets allow it and the AX73 that I used here is stuck with whatever TP-Link has to offer. Then again, you can use Pi-hole and block pretty much anything DNS related that you don't like being sent from your router, so there is hope after all. There you have it, that's about what you can expect in terms of privacy from a TP-Link router. I know that some people will argue that the internet service providers collect at least as much or even more data from your network. And I know that's true, but let's not add more watchers to this unsolicited show. In any case, hope you liked the video, thank you for watching and see you next time.